Step 4. Support Nodes. Creating and Measuring. In this step, we're going to talk about the infrastructure or support nodes that are responsible for creating quantum states and measuring them. The first node that we're going to talk about is the Entangled Photon Pair Source, or EPPS. And this node is responsible for creating entangled pairs of photons. So it's like an entanglement factory. The process that it relies on is called Spontaneous Parametric Down Conversion, of SPDC where a single photon coming from a laser is shown at a BBO crystal, and it, split, it produces two outgoing photons, which, are, which can be entangled. Now, both of these produced photons must be coupled then to fibers, which direct them towards um, nodes of the network. The process of SPDC is very inefficient. Therefore, EPPS is also very inefficient. This is because SPDC is a very weak nonlinear effect. Uh, SPDC produces uh, polarization encoded photons. If you recall, we caught, uh, talked about polarization encoding for photons as well as time beam encoding. And this node can be integrated inside other nodes if need be. And we encountered this node uh, already when we were discussing link architectures when we talked about MIM link architecture, or meet in the middle, or memory interface memory. The next support node is the Bell State Analyzer. This is the main entanglement splicer in a quantum network, and we have used it extensively. It relies on the interference of photons. So two incoming photons interfere at the beam splitter, and then they are detected by the two detectors. There are very strict requirements in terms of the photo, photon arrival time. They must arrive within a very narrow time window, such that there is a significant overlap between the wave functions corresponding to uh, both photons. The hardware structure depends on the qubit encoding. For example, uh, for um, time beam encoding, we need a minimum of one beam splitter and two detectors. The number of hardware components increases when we move to polarization encoding. There, we need a single beam splitter, two polarization beam splitters, and four detectors. And BSA is fundamentally limited uh, to having a success probability of one half times eta squared, where eta is the detector efficiency. So even with unit efficiency for the detectors, so perfect detectors, we can only succeed 50% of the time. The next support node that we're going to talk about is the repeater graph state source, or RGSS. In spirit, this node is similar to an EPPS in that it has to produce entanglement, but it is much more advanced source of entanglement. In particular, that's because it's a source tailored for memoryless repeaters. So these are the, uh, this is the RGS link architecture that we have talked about before. This source is uh, supposed to uh, generate multipartite entangled states of photons that look like uh, graph states uh, drawn over here. So the inner qubits are all connected, all entangled together. And each of the inner qubit has an outside arm qubit connected to it via this link over here. Half of the RGS is sent to a node to the right, and the other half is sent to the node to the left. The structure of this RGS uh, is also configurable. We are not limited to having only eight qubits like here in the icon, but uh, any number of qubits that we choose. And the time ordering of emitted photons is very important as well. Often the desired timing is quite challenging to implement in real life in a laboratory. Uh, and how it works is we have multiple emitters which are periodically pumped so excited to an, uh, a higher level, and when they de-excite, they emit a photon. When we do this repeatedly, the photons can be made uh, to be entangled with each other. But at the same time, in order to produce the desired RGS structure, we have to also implement various single qubit and two qubit gates on the uh, physical emitters. And finally, in order to utilize uh, the RGS uh, states produced by this source, we also need a corresponding measurement node called the Advanced Bell State Analyzer or ABSA. 
And this is the more capable brother of our usual BSA. And again, it's tailored for memoryless uh, repeaters. And it contains a, a BSA as a submodule, but at the same time, it's also capable of single qubit measurement either in the X spaces or in the Z bases. And how these incoming photons from the RGSs are measured? Uh, first one is measured in the mm, BSA submodule, so uh, it's, it takes part in a Bell state measurement. And the next incoming photon has to be either measured in the X basis or the Z basis. And then again, the next incoming photon is measured in the BSA submodule, and the next photon after that is, uh, takes part in a single qubit measurement either in the X or Z. And the complication with the single qubit measurements is that they are conditional. The basis depends on the full outcome history of all the previous measurements. This means that uh, ABSA must be able to switch bases very, very fast. And it also must be highly configurable in order to accommodate the RGS structure generated in the RGSS. These are the main support nodes uh, in this step. In the next step, we're going to look at one particular one, and that's an optical switch. See you there.